Now, every time I attach a CPU cooler, I have this brief worry about how much should I actually tighten the cooler? Because if I over tighten it, I risk damaging potentially the motherboard and the CPU. But if I under tighten it, will I actually hurt the thermal performance because of not good enough contact with the CPU and things? So I decided to test it out. Now, first off, let's go through the actual hardware I used for these tests. Uh, the CPU cooler is a CryoRig H7, and then I used Arctic MX4, which is like a decent thermal paste, which I think everyone in the world uses. And then when it comes to the CPU, it's an Intel i5-7600K, and I did all the testing in an NZXT H500, but that's not massively relevant because it was kind of an open bench situation, kind of, I guess, because it was on its side. Anyway, we'll get into that a bit. And then in regards to how I actually did the test, for the first test, I just took the CPU cooler and placed it down on the CPU. There was a bit of wriggling around to get it into the position that it needed to be, so that would have helped actually spread the thermal compound around. And then for the second test, I actually threaded the screws first, and then did two equal rotations um, per screw. And then from there, I did plus one screw, plus one screw, plus one screw, plus one screw, all the way down to when the cooler was actually threaded to its maximum. That is kind of the case with most CPU coolers, I think. I think it's quite difficult to over screw a CPU cooler, but honestly, considering how much you spend on PC hardware, there is always that concern of damaging it. So that's kind of the point of these tests. And when it comes to the CPU, fan speed I set it at a maximum 100% for the entire time so it means that there isn't any uh, fan speed fluctuation based on temperature I actually placed the case flat down on its side because well I couldn't have it standing up without a screwed in cooler that wouldn't work I need gravity um, but this meant because of how the NZXT H500 is designed it actually blocks off all of the intake air flow vents and stuff so I had to take off the side panel so that actual air would come in I did record the ambient temperature it was sitting at about 23 degrees for the entire time and then in regards to the actual thermal paste application I did initially want to reapply thermal paste in between each test but then I realized that that actually introduces a variable because it's pretty much impossible to have the exact same thermal paste application every time uh, so then I decided to just use the same thermal paste application for all of the tests so let's have a look at the actual results Now, unfortunately, the test results are actually quite boring. There isn't much of a temperature variation from just resting the CPU on the cooler all the way up to threading it all the way. It's about four degrees. I'm actually quite surprised because I, I was worried that the CPU was going to catch on fire uh, in the initial test. I didn't think there was going to be enough thermal contact. Uh, but kind of what it shows is that you shouldn't be too worried about how much you tighten the CPU cooler down. So have a look on the manufacturer's website who makes the CPU cooler and see if there is like a maximum amount of threading which is like the amount you should screw it down and if it doesn't have that screw it down until it feels relatively sturdy and from that point on it's fine instead of risking actually damaging your motherboard anyway with that it brings me to the end of a very short and i guess fairly pointless video if you enjoyed the video do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one i've got an instagram and twitter account so go and check out those if you want more of me in your life and until the next video bye bye